it's still Poet the Poet, uh, in case you had any doubts. And I would be remiss if I did not thank Victor for letting us come into the Orange Bear here and uh, being looked down upon by all this wonderful uh, local Russian art that we have on the walls. Um, you'll have to come by and uh, visit the exhibits because they change frequently and they're fascinating. Um, now we come to Bob Quattrone. Uh, who has a completely illegible bio, but uh, <laughs> that's, that's let's see, it. coming coming through uh, Columbia College, oh, and, uh, oh, yes, and um, <clears throat> like the other one I can't make out, as a matter of no, fact. Oh, graduate school, college uh, teacher. And uh, no, what do you got there? Among your, like among, among, your, uh, among your career in, the, uh, in academia, you ran into Lionel Trilling? He, he did everything for me. He was, what was he like? <laughs> I was an illiterate man before I met Lionel. How did you run into him? Not on a motorcycle. Well, he was <laughs> not on a motorcycle. That's my question. Okay. <laughs> How did you run into him? <laughs> not on a motorcycle. <laughs> he had a uh, he had a lecture. It's 1963. He had a lecture uh, in the yeah. college uh -huh. in the for uh, for general students. Mm -hmm. Didn't have to be an English major. And generals <laughs> could be a general. <laughs> in sleep in his class. Sounds good to me. In the glory in the glory days of the New York City school system, <laughs> all us high school students had to read at least one Lionel Trilling story. Usually it was of this time at that place. And you're telling me he wrote himself in? I think that story is uh, about uh, a confession about why he didn't become a greater writer than he was. Uh -huh. Who was he in the story? He was there, as, as you know, every good story, you're yeah. all the characters. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh oh! All, all the characters. All very the stuff good. Very good. The, Come back, the, Robert. The dirt. The dirt. So you we have were an dishing. inner interior monologue going on. In the the story. dirt we were dishing <laughs> off the camera is too hot for the real show. But if it you was write, good it, dish. It was but good if, dish. But though. write to your local station, and we'll supply you with it. Robert gives good dish. In a plain brown. Oh well, you, so you, you want dished to know, it out if so you. So what you're see. asking is, which voice was the most important one in the story? Why not? The one that he was rejecting, the voice he was rejecting, that's the student. Oh, the lunatic. Oh. The lunatic, right. The creative part of it. Fits right into the poetry so, circuit, right, I gotta sure say. Speaking of which, how about a poem? <laughs> All right. I'm, I'm going to start off with a, I guess this is a heavy poem. Uh -huh. uh, I just, I'll preface it by saying uh, when I was uh, a boy, there were these war books mm -hmm. in my uncle's room. He'd come back as a veteran, uh -huh. and they've always been with me. So this one's called At Grandma's. For those of us who do not read and have not been involved, a photographic history will have to do. The mere faces of the dead across the page has stopped many a mind straight in its track, looking out across time with a prophecy of what will inevitably come again. The corpses piled high in mass graves with a little child's face staring forward, a bullet cleanly between its eyes, which are open looking at the skies. Empty air in the clasp of its hand, mother's kerchief in the corner visible, a heavy coat of the breadbasket Ukraine. You were not 10 when you looked over this page, and for many years it always brought you back in mother's house by the self-playing piano, in uncle's room among his military gear, three books of photos on the war, which seemed as natural as anything there, except for the hideousness of all the dead. The soldiers scattered in a still ballet with looks on their faces close to that of wolf round beady eyes sharpened by the sight of death into the camera they vacantly stare whether dead or alive welcoming history with a glance it's a rather Powerful. Well, Very powerful. Thank you. You have you have planted too heavy. Too heavy. You have no, planted so this early in the morning. <laughs> you have planted the seeds of a sleepless <laughs> night for all, for all of us, I'm sure. But but I just wanted to mention. You see, Diana, you think you've been on dates before? <laughs> 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 the date from how, hell. How, how would you How would you like that? The date like from that? hell. Wow. Now, now, Bob, you've taught at a number of uh, of Schools. universities and colleges, and uh, I see that you've uh, also. Uh, been the editor of something at Fairleigh Dickinson University. Now, Fairleigh Dickinson, that was Emily's sister, right? All loose cannons, rolling all over the place. That's what that was. Uh huh. We used to call Emily's it Fairleigh. Emily's sister, right? Fairleigh right. Oh. Fairly oh. Ridiculous? Did you ever right. hear it called oh. Fairleigh Ridiculous? Oh, all the time. There, yeah. there is a time delay a working joke. on this program. <laughs> uh, what's well, 
What it, sort of literature did the magazine, uh, what was it called, first of all? Was well, it, it, was, it was really just dressed up naked lunch. Ah. Wow. Uh, mm-hmm. wow. Burrows, burrows. X-rated. We're, we're, X-rated. We're, we're, X-rated, well, yeah. We're all naked X-rated. under our clothes. I don't see what the problem is. Speak for yourself, Robert. <laughs> I thought I was. <laughs> I, I was elected editor to clean the magazine up. Uh, did you? How'd you do? Couldn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> well then, we'd better stick. We'd better On stick to note. your poems then. How about how about another uh, another poem? <laughs> okay. Shuffle those papers quick. <laughs> let's let's do something uh, a little livelier. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, Please, there's a lady present. <laughs> Where? Oh, so we're all set then. Yeah. 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 Okay. Go. Death of a roach. 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 Thy final hour does approach. Know it not that I can crush thee to a tasty meal, lip smacking good, thy legs and limbs oozing down my chin, savage, savage roach, dark, useless, disturbed creature. I shall finish thee, ignite thy nature with my higher sprite. Know me not, Roach, thy tormentor, dark and ugly thing. My greater reason perils thee. Turn thy hideous eyes, Roach, and flee. Thank the ignorant gods above for thy miserable mother's love. Hey, Roach, not that way. Not around the corner in open view of human civility. Our power of patience we forego when we get a view of thee. Vile, mashed up, pitiful thing. How shall you vie with great humanity? We are the lords. Reason in us does prevail. Usually, Uh usually. Unless we see thee scampering across the floor on a wooden stair or a pantry shelf, down a greasy wall or an animal pelf, pelt. Ah, yes, then we are unhinged and chase thee down hysterically. A ferocious spray of gaseous poison in the hand, pellets of corrosive malice in the air, we come after thee. Mouth salivating plentifully. Especially if you are popping from the stove, heated to scalding and pumped with noxious fluid. Leap high, Roach, to save thy life, almost to the kitchen sky. But we have thee now, bathe in executioner's fuel. <laughs> Useless our reason now. For thy death, we ecstatically drool. Thy loathsome nature become our one true delicacy. Roach, give it up. On my plate, your tortured limbs have dropped. Oh, that was we, that was biblical. I've never we heard. We have you surrounded. <laughs> I've never heard a roach. Addressed oh, as the oh, before. Reminds, oh, me, oh, reminds me of a landlord I had. Oh, once. I, had right, I had to read that poem. <laughs> Although that, that poem came from personal experience. I can imagine. But, <laughs> but all it's downright Shakespearean. You have to murder thousands of roaches before oh. you can write that poem. Oh the only re- the only response I can give you is a quote from Bugs Bunny of all people, which was, "Yeah, personally, I prefer hamburger." <laughs> okay, but those roaches were not in New Jersey. Okay. Where were they? Uh, New York. Those are really? New York roaches. New York. We have quality, we have quality <laughs> roaches. <laughs> Good roaches. Our ro- listen, our roaches are worth a Wagnerian funeral. There's no getting around. Have you ever seen roaches pop out of a stove? Yes, I have. Yes, it's oh. a, it is a biblical and play. The and they can leap. How about another poem? <laughs> <laughs> no more insects. <laughs> How about a poem about death? Why not? Yeah, let's, yeah, let's change the subject. Go ahead. Let's do a poem about death. Make it death. quick. My wife said to me, Make sure you read this poem about death. That's the only one I like. Okay, it's the only poem you like. Fragment. This poem is uh, 15 years old. Unhappy and alone, tied up in the heat of midday, a lump on my leg like a time bomb ready to end me, everywhere reports of sordid and atrocious death, pain and horror that no one could withstand, whether shark off Australian water taking a leg and coming back for the rest, the victim swimming off so that friends could hear the punches and shouts that marked his end, blood stained in shreds, mere fish food, or the more probable agony spent hemorrhaging blood, hour after hour, stomach shattered like broken glass, 
lumps of wild flesh growing everywhere, eating into the very pith and marrow, slow starvation in the eyes, torture beyond sanity's threshold till we are driven like a creature spent all night, the final nights in pain, trying to gain the spot where death becomes desired, where we can give up life. Too much pain, finally, our hold is cut, unstrung, afloat, the soul drifts on the last sea. The body quite gone, only terror ahead. At last, only the unsteady, shaky bed. Don't even look at what you are now. Flattened down to the very earth. No power to rise. God's command in your eyes. In total helplessness, you snap a twig under earth's heavy step. Is this it's what a sermon, you, actually. Is this what you tell your that students? That was beautiful. No, that was beautiful. But now I feel like going out and getting drunk. <laughs> you don't have to go out. We're in a bar. Oh, that's <laughs> right. That's how convenient. <laughs> that's, that's how it works. That is, was a sermon. Is, is this what you tell your students? This is what my students drove me to. Ah. Ah. And <laughs> this is what this is. The result of 20 years of teaching was that I had to retire from the classroom and save my sanity. And when you come, become a, become a writer. And when oh. you come back from where you <laughs> drove them, what advice do you give them? I say to them, stay as mad as possible for as long as possible. And? Mad having both meanings. Uh huh. Oh, okay. Good advice. And good get advice. a good heavy pair of boots. But with I, all love, this, I with, love that pith and marrow part. You I don't know. often get with all a good this, pith with and all marrow poem. With, with all this death well, and that, destruction. That was a whole series of cliches. That Bob, we're, we're having a conversation. Yes, I know. Don't interrupt me. All that. right, focus on me then. With all this, <laughs> with all this death and destruction, I will give you a haiku. Oh, a okay. haiku. Yes. Sculptor chips at stone, makes mistake, starts banging head, abstract masterpiece. Banging nice, head. Very nice. I thought that was that's fitting. Or, good, yeah. You know, from the. Yes. Actually, he was, he was chiseling out a roach there, you see. That's, oh. what, the, that's what he was doing. Well, when. Well, Robert. Well, when do you two Gee. start writing, writing a poem together? This is going to be very interesting. That's right. <laughs> yeah. It would be a very dark and scary dark one, don't uh, you think? Dark poem. Yes. Death. Yeah. Death. Even the funny poems are dark poems. Death on that's a right. date. Death on a date. On a date. It could that. happen. I can it could happen. It All right. Well, Diana Manister and Bob Quattrone, I want to thank you for coming on Poet the Poet. Thank and you. I'm honored to be on a double bill with Robert Quattrone. Oh, thank you. I think it was more oh, like a triple bill. threat what here. But that's like, we'll see you next time. Bye.